Okay, our next talk is Learning to Nix, our summer of Nix experience. Let's welcome Enric and Alberto. Hi, so welcome to our talk. Uh, I'm Enric. And I'm Alberto. Uh, one day I was uh, procrastinating, of course, and uh, browsing the discourse forum uh, as a newcomer to the, uh, to the Nix community. And one day I found a post that basically said that you could get to learn Nix, um, improve uh, the software, free software ecosystem by improving their packaging situation on Nix, getting to know other Nix members and getting paid for it. I mean, it's like a dream come true. What is it? <laughs> well, it's a summer of Nix program. And it's a result of uh, collaboration between the, Euro uh, the European Commission through the NGI program, the Net Foundation, and the Nix OS Foundation. In this program, uh, the Net funds projects. And these projects need to be packaged by Nix. Then the Nix OS Foundation uh, organizes mobs, which are teams that work uh, more or less in a more programming way, uh, with the aim of uh, teaching Nix to four people through a mentorship program. Our team uh, was uh, mentored by Jack uh, Lightcap, who unfortunately is not present here. Maybe Abdullah is, although he might have pretty severe jet lag. Uh, because he came from New York yesterday. <laughs> uh, Roland uh, over there, who gave a talk yesterday uh, about poetry to Nix, Alberto, and yours truly. So we want to talk about the different projects that we were working to learn about Nix during these days. Uh, first of all, we talk about uh, LIV25519. This one was a crypto library that it was to implement the curve to 5519. And in order to be able to packetize this project, we also need to packetize the, those libraries, like leave random bytes to make random numbers, a leave CPU cycle that it was mainly focused for benchmarking and stuff. This project was really, really interesting because we need to dig into the cross compilation because one of the key aspects of this part, it was like it must be worked with different architectures as well. And uh, they were working with assembly code that it was, mm, be sure that it was working as it was expected. The next project that we worked on is IDEA. IDEA is a suite of platforms that aim to improve the situation of uh, open hardware design through making it easy to share and reuse open hardware designs and also to uh, integrate with tools such as SkyCat. In our involvement with the IDEA projects, we introduced Nix into the CI systems. And we also created Flakes uh, for every sub-project of the uh, IDEA umbrella. It basically consisted of uh, integrating Python and JavaScript uh, building processes. As well, we were working on Ice Studio, that it's a tool mainly for a start working with FPGAs, with the ones that are open hardware. And the initial approach was because there was an app image. Actually, the first approach was uh, applying that uh, app image into the next package. But uh, we, while we were learning, we understand that the, the right way of doing it in Nix, it was uh, doing it from source. So we, instead of using that app image, we were able to build from the source and integrate it into the next package from the source. And finally, one of the last projects involved uh, NitroKey 3 firmware. Uh, in this project, we basically continued the work uh, from, from previous summer of Nix iterations. Um, and we were, um, our task uh, was uh, getting Nix to build the uh, NitroKey 3 firmware projects. Uh, they are built in Rust, so we had to use the, the Rust platform and the different cross compilation uh, facilities. Um, then uh, the way the, that we inherited the project was from a repo with a flat.nix, but we wanted to make sure that the uh, results of our work would live in Nix packages. Yeah, so during these projects, we start learning a lot of experience. First of all, and one of the most important things is that we uh, learn in Nix 
about uh, other contributors. So we try to learn Nix in the way of the other users use Nix. That was uh, using the Nix pattern that most of people use. Also, uh, and one of key aspects is we try to choose uh, some non-trivial projects that we consider because at the end, the main goal is we need to learn how to use Nix, how to packetize Nix. And since we have someone that helped us to make it easier in that case, it was something really interesting. Also, since these projects are not trivial, also they usually have a lot of contributors, a lot of people. So also during this, this summer, we were able to uh, talk and communicate with other long-time contributors that were in the community, not just in Nix, but also in other open source projects. Also, um, we start gaining enough knowledge to try to understand and be uh, responsible of new packages at the end, because we understand indeed what we did. So that is the main idea. And something really interesting for me is that we were using also open source tools to communicate between each other. For example, uh, during the summer of NICE was the first time that I was started using uh, Matrix or Jitsi for communication between us, So, and also different tools for developers. And we gained this experience not because our, the projects are not trivial, and that's make us find a nice rabbit holes that we dig into it. So one of the first rabbit holes that we fell into was cross-compilation. Um, specifically, for instance, for a lib25519, uh, a low-level library, it, it could mm, kind of uh, cleanly build on native ARM. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that it could also cross-compile uh, not only to try when you don't have uh, an ARM machine ready, but also to speed up the building process too in some cases. So in the case of lib25519, um, we could learn about uh, all the different options that uh, you can pass a configure script, like configure platforms uh, and so. Uh, that, uh, mm, for that, uh, we had to study the building scripts of uh, lib25519, which basically uh, revolved around a Python script that actually didn't follow the audio source conventions. So we had to make accommodations to make it uh, very easy to pass options to, to that script. Then also we could learn uh, a lot about the different stems that are available in Nix packages and also how cross compilation interacts with them. For instance, uh, we could uh, try cross compiling uh, for ARM with LLVM or uh, with GCC and then uh, built on RISC, uh, on RISC-5 forearm with LLVM. So we got to try all the different combinations and the uh, different uh, things that we needed to change uh, in the Nix, uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the derivations. For instance, uh, the places where, where you list the dependencies and some strange cases where um, we couldn't reproduce errors when we had OpenSSL defined in both uh, native build inputs and build inputs at the same time. Was quite, uh, which was a little bit unintuitive. Yeah, so also there are different projects that we were working, not just libraries, but also GUI applications, ones that they are web-based or they are in your system. For those tools, most of the time, they were using some kind of tool for building, like Poetry, Grant, or NPM. But instead of trying to do everything from scratch, we decided to use different tools that actually the community are development uh, in development states. So we start using, for example, Poetry to Nix or the derivation of NPM that is actually into Nix packages. For Poetry was really, really straightforward. It was really nice implemented. And also something that was really useful is that one of our colleagues was helping uh, us a lot because he was working a lot with Poetry to Nix and so us that in most of the cases, you just need to override the dependencies because maybe the version, it doesn't match actually what you want, what you need. In general, we can say that poetry was really straightforward for that cases. Also, it was pretty, pretty similar to the NPM, like 90% of the errors were uh, about dependency versions and just by overriding, you have almost everything in your own. But the most problematic one was grant and it was because there were any tool actually implemented to um, using grant into the Nix. 
in order to do that, we need to figure out what they are doing with the grant tool, see that they actually were downloading dependencies uh, while they are using, so we need to uh, bypass this and do it previously. And let's say we are also very, very happy with the result because also uh, the other contributions to the project were affecting our pull request very fast, very easy, helping us if we have any problem. And I'll. Uh, and mm -hmm. and uh, another rabbit hole that uh, was quite interesting and particularly for me uh, was remote building. Uh, in my case, well, in mob programming, uh, you are supposed to be on call when um, during the, the mob programming sessions. So you have to share the screen uh, in a call. So uh, I mean, you have a, a video for, uh, for other people. You have to share what you are doing. And also sometimes you have to run uh, the actual uh, building of the packages. And that involves a, a, um, a lot of resource con consumption. In my case, uh, because I was developing on this laptop, I didn't have uh, that many resources to spare. So I had to rely on remote building. I learned quickly about the, the builder's option that you can pass to NixBuild. And I was very happy and I'm very thankful for uh, making such a seamless tool to work with uh, different builders and having so many different options to control priorities for builders and yeah, and the different options that you have for seamlessly building remotely on other machines. Um, some uh, that's like a sub rabbit hole of this. Uh, you need to become familiar with a trusted users uh, list because uh, uh, when you want to use these uh, these facilities, uh, you need to be in it. Uh, so then you need to also understand the uh, security implications of being in that list. Otherwise, then you don't benefit of, of these substitutions. Then um, to actually provision the remote machines, I'm very thankful for uh, Nixos. Any, anywhere I could learn a, a lot of uh, a lot from it, and also I made uh, working with remote builders uh, a lot easier because I could provision without almost mm, no manual steps. Okay, and one of the most interesting aspects for me was when we are dealing with optimization flags. And that's because when we are working with stuff like Leaf 25519, that is a cryptographic library, do you expect that the developer knows a lot of uh, which kind of optimization their software needs? Mm -hmm. And this is because in Nix in general, they have a really amazing uh, flag optimization set by default because they try to guarantee performance and also um, they try to guarantee uh, security. And that's very important, but in that kind of libraries, do you expect that maybe the developer already know that this kind of um, performance optimizations exist and they don't choose for some reason? That's why they, we decide for something critical like cryptography, use the default ones. To be able to do that, we need to dig a little bit into how the Nix debug works to figure out where, why it wasn't take it the one that we want and how to remove the other ones. Also, for that, we were using object done mainly because when we have the binary, we can we were able to just look in if all the flags were set successfully as we wanted. And the overall idea of how we do that, it was like taking all the flags by default, remove it from the actual flags, and just take it the one that they are useful. And also at the end, the ones that uh, the developer told that there are the important ones. Also, that gives us a chance to uh, modify if we were using Clam, for example, as this STDM, to add additional flags that they say by default. And also, one critical aspect, since we were using MOV, I previously said, it was like, um, in order to be fast enough, we need to cache everything, because at the end, uh, if some software take at least three minutes per time to build, and we were like doing changes quite often, uh, we need to not try to build that much. So we will start using caches to uh, start cache most of the binaries, so we were able to swap between users and not need to wait as much as possible. So in other words, uh, we learn a lot uh, 
a lot of different aspects uh, around uh, building on NICs and for NICs. Uh, but uh, some of the uh, expectations that we had uh, before starting the program and then the results after, um, th th these expectations were in some way broken, but not in the bad sense, of course. Um, for instance, uh, I was expecting a very strict uh, mob format, uh, like a, a strict um, mob programming way of working where you have a, a very hectic uh, schedule of uh, turning to the next person uh, just after five minutes and not getting enough time to soak in the information that you're having or to actually um, try different aspects uh, when you're uh, building these packages. So uh, what we actually did was settle in a more uh, relaxed uh, mob format, actually. Uh, we worked uh, around 30 minutes each person and then uh, after a while, then, then we exchanged places. And that guaranteed that everyone got a fair chance uh, to learn about the, prog uh, the problems that we were having of reproducing the, the same problems. And also that uh, guaranteeing that everyone was on the same page, especially like, uh, if another day uh, somebody couldn't make it to, to the, the call. Then uh, one fear that I particularly had uh, before starting the program was uh, documentation. Um, I, I had the false impression that the documentation in Nix was bad. Uh, what I learned is that there is a lot of documentation and maybe what in some ways can be perceived as negative is uh, uh, a hard aspect to, to actually finding the documentation that you need when you need it. After our involvement in Summer of Nix, uh, we actually gained a lot of experience with uh, the documentation that is already present, and we know our way now to find the documentation uh, where we need, and when there are gaps, now we know what to, where to look for, so that we can be more uh, helpful to the community too. Another thing, another expectation that, that I had uh, uh, before starting the project was that since uh, all the projects were funded uh, by NLNet and stuff, they would be super enthusiastic with uh, our efforts of packaging them. Uh, however, uh, it wasn't always the case. Uh, there were different levels of enthusiasm uh, with Upstream. And in some cases, we got feedback within minutes. We would submit PRs to Upstream, and they would, would be merged in, in no time and with super positive involvement. In other cases, we were even asked for most apologies because we didn't ask for permission to package the project. In, in an, another case, uh, we wouldn't hear a response uh, uh, or we didn't have too much response to our PRs. And also, as we mentioned earlier, I think one of the core aspects that is that we're learning from others. At the end, we're, we were people from different backgrounds, people that was more into hardware stuff, people who are more in software, but at the end, we were learning one of each other. And this is, will be silly, but at the end, one was using Emacs, or Beam, another one using Elix. But that's helped you understand how other people's workflows uh, works, uh, how you improve your ones, and also understand a little bit things that maybe you think that you know it in some time, but seeing in a different way, do you see that maybe you are not right? And another aspect that we see is that at the beginning, since we are we were five person, we say okay, maybe packets as a software will be really fast. There are a lot of people that is working currently, but that wasn't actually the case. I remember the first day say yeah, maybe we can packetize this software in one day, this one in another day. But when you start finding those uh, rabbit holes that we previously mentioned, uh, we say that maybe that was not the case. It was uh, also it was the good part because it helped us to understand the and dig into the Nix internal Nix aspects. Mm. To finish our talk, uh, we would like to give a, a couple of tips tips to the future summer of Nix editions. Uh, one thing that that I, I found lacking in this uh, in this edition of summer of Nix was uh, actually getting to know the other uh, members. In total, there were um, yeah, some dozens of 
participants, uh, and we were just uh, one of the teams. And we didn't get a, a well, we were in the matrix room, but we maybe I would have missed a, I, I wouldn't have missed a, a call with them to get to know them a little bit more personally. Uh, I, I would expect maybe future editions to, to have more communication between teams. And one of the things that I think uh, could be achieved is to leverage the different teams to, for instance, to re review the other team's PRs, or at least give like a preliminary review. And I think that would uh, aport several benefits. For instance, reduce work workload on Nix package maintainers and also to improve the, um, to get everyone on the same page and also um, get to know uh, what other teams are facing. Also to sum it up, we want to mention that uh, the summer of Nix is not just we packetize 30 packets or something like that. The main idea we want to share about this is that's make new contributors uh, being inside of the Nix community, people that want to keep improving the Nix ecosystem uh, be here in the community. So we want to address, uh, to say con thank you for all the people that is organizing this kind of stuff and try to promote that following years keep doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, to reiterate the, uh, the thankfulness to everyone who organized it and everyone involved. And yeah, in summary, it wasn't just 30 packages created from our part was also uh, for new Nix community members who gain a lot of experience. So thanks to everyone involved for all the help, to, uh, uh, to Valentin for organizing it, and Alnet Foundation. Yeah, so thanks everyone. Do we have any questions? Okay, I think we're good. We're and good. Uh, well, let's thank our speakers again. <laughs>